feet hip distance apart. Push down into the soles of your feet. So we establish that nice strong connection from the core of the pelvis down, stretching the leg bones into the earth and then lifting up through the spine, up through the crown of the head. And then the shoulders just sit on top. So practicing that posture every day is a useful reminder to your brain about which way is down and which way is up and how to organize around the midline. Okay, big inhale, take your arms up. Exhale, hands to your sides. And inhale. And exhale. If you can breathe in and out through your nose, go ahead. I can't always do that while I'm talking and teaching, but you can shift your breath to the back of your nostrils, the back of the throat. One more time, big inhale. And exhale, reaching out nice and wide. And we're gonna add the bowing forward. So we go inhale, exhale to bow. You can bend your knees, right? And your knees are hip distance apart. Inhale, look halfway up. Exhale to bow. So don't let your knees come together here. Inhale, push into your feet. Keep your knees as wide as they are. Exhale, hands to your sides. We'll do that again. Big inhale. Exhale to bow. Inhale, look halfway up. Exhale to bow. Inhale, come all the way up. So I taught a class yesterday on shoulders and talked about how if you can't take your arms overhead, there are other ways to do it. But we're gonna do two more like that, but you could bend your elbows, for example, and then exhale, bow. Inhale, look up. Exhale, bow, push into your feet, keep your knees wide, and inhale, come all the way up. Exhale, let's do one more. I always lose count of how many I said we're gonna do, so here we go, inhale. Exhale, such a good warm up move. Inhale, look up. Exhale, getting the breath and the body going. Inhale, big full breath, stretch up. And exhale. All right, now we're actually gonna go right into what we normally start with, which is our extended child's pose. So from here, you can either just come down onto the ground or you can start to lower yourself carefully through a squat, see how long you can keep your heels close to the ground. Knees wide, reach forward, tuck your head, and then we'll come all the way down onto the knees. Point your toes, knees apart, toes together, sit your hips back, stretch your arms out. And just settling in here. So we normally, we start in this pose, but sometimes it's nice to get a little breath and movement going first. And so now you can feel the back body breathing in and out through the nose, also, starting with those breathing movements will help clear the nostrils if they weren't first thing in the morning. Nice full breath. Feel the back of your ribs expanding side to side, front to back. Breathe into that spot right between your shoulder blades up to the neck. We often neglect that spot with our breath. We don't let that expand, that spot right up here, upper back. Nice full breath. Stretch it. Good. And then we'll come to downward puppy. So hands are outer shoulder distance apart. Spread your fingers. Tuck your toes. Walk your knees back just a little bit. Feet are hip distance apart. And then lean back. So you're reaching back. Sides of the body nice and long. Push into your finger pads. Push into your knuckles. But the heel of the hand lifts a little bit. So the advantage of doing downward puppy instead of downward dog is that most of us could get the heel of the hands off the floor, right? So, so there's a little space there. It's a really hard to do in downward dog, but here at least we can pretend that we know what we're doing with our hands. Ground down through the base of the thumb and the index finger, but still keep the heel of the hand off the mat. So that's just good wrist action. And then downward facing dog, just for a moment lift up and back and you'll notice immediately the heels of the hands get more weight on them right but see if you can't shift some of that weight forward into the front of the hand into the knuckles into the finger pads you could keep your knees quite bent and then we're just going to come right back down onto the knees and walk the hands back underneath the shoulders for cat and cow so here we go sink the chest inhale look up Exhale, rounding, like you're bringing the crown of your head to your tail. And then inhale, look up, 
straight elbows and exhale. And again, try to breathe in and out through the nose. Inhale. The crease of the elbows are mostly forward. That means the inside of the elbow is pointing forward. That's good external shoulder rotation. You're doing it. Yep, exhale. Two more breaths, inhale. Working through that nice sinuous action of the spine, trying to feel the vertebrae, feel where things get a little bit stuck. Can you breathe into that spot and then back to neutral? Okay, and we'll do our twist. So taking the left palm face up, thread it through underneath the right arm, come onto the left side of your upper head, like a, your temple, and come onto your right fingertips. You make a little tent with your right fingertips so you can draw your right shoulder back and breathe. It's a really simple twist. The hips are mostly squared off. I'm not doing anything in particular with my pelvis or my legs. I'm really just focusing on the mo mobility of my lower back, my guts, and maybe some stretch in the upper shoulder. And breathe. So three full breaths in these poses, trying to focus your attention on your breath, on the movement of the breath, on where the breath can expand the body. And then we'll come back to center and over to the second side. So the right palm face up, thread it through, and you land on your outer shoulder and your temple. And come up on your left fingertips, draw that shoulder blade back, open your throat a little bit, just so that you feel like your tail and your head are in relationship to each other. Often they're doing different things. We don't even really realize how connected they are. And the head is, you know, we're doing funny things with the chin, hyperextending the neck or overly rounding the upper back. But see if you can breathe into the whole length of the spine. Use your breath to connect the pieces. Expand around that midline. Big inhale and then back to center. All right, we're gonna do our little neck stretch here. So sit back on your heels any way you like. This is where one could sit on a block, right, between the heels. And we're gonna start by taking the palms, uh, arms out in front of us, palms face each other, interlace your hands, then turn the palms away and stretch the arms overhead. And lift up through the sides of the waist. It's tempting to overlift through the shoulders. In fact, let your shoulders come down. If you need to bend your elbows to start, do that. So you can sink into the sides of your waist a bit. And then inhale, lift through the sides of the waist and leave the shoulders behind, right? They're just taking a ride. Tip your chin up, but lengthen the back of your neck, right? So watch that, right? You can tip your chin up. You can extend the neck and still have space between the, the skull and those neck vertebrae. Big inhale and exhale, release. Okay, take your left arm off to the left and we're gonna make sure that elbow is nice and loose. Keep your hips heavy. Right arm comes across the chest over the side of the face, palm face down. And then from there, push your right rib cage to the right. So it's like you're trying to bring your hips back to the right. So really rounding, breathing into the, the side stretch there, the whole right side, left arm is easy, left shoulder is nice and easy. Big full breath, expanding all the way from the hip, up the waistline, up the ribs, into the armpit. You can even turn open a little bit. And then take that right arm, slide it across, back down to your side, and I'm reaching to the side of my mat. I'm gonna take that shoulder back, right shoulder back, but not the hand, the hand will stay in the same plane as the body. So my arm's not behind me, it's next to me, but the shoulder is back. Then I'm gonna drop my ear to my left shoulder. Still keeping my weight over to the right and reaching with those fingertips. So this could be a really strong stretch for some people. Breathe into it, you can back off if you need to, just lifting the head a little bit or not pushing your ribs so far over to the right. And then just nodding a little bit of yes, Gentle, slow, gentle movements through the head. A little no, just very slow, very easy movements. Feeling those neck muscles stretch big, strong neck muscles. The vagus nerve runs down through there. So this is good for releasing tension around the vagus nerve. It allows that nerve to actually have more activity. Okay, then we'll take the left hand and come back up. Okay, so just 
you stretch those muscles and then you give them help to work again. Take your right arm off to the right. Nice, easy in that elbow and that right shoulder. Left arm comes across the side body, across the side of the cheek, palm face down. Then move your rib cage, your hips to the left. So you're creating a little more of an arch on that left side and drop your ear toward the right, gently. Notice I'm not totally letting it go. There's still a little length traction there. So the vagus nerve is the nerve that innervates or activates um, a lot of important things, including your lungs, your intestines, right? All of your guts, like all your main organs. It loops all the way down through there, starting at the back of the, the brain and moving all the way down through the side of the neck and back up again. Okay, take that top arm and slide it across. And we're reaching those fingertips away. Shrug your left shoulder back, but keep your hand in line with your torso. And then lower your ear, your right ear toward your right shoulder. Breathe, swallow. Swallowing is a, a vagus nerve response as well. So if you're ever feeling anxious, your heart rate is raised, your, you feel like your blood pressure is up, and you want to calm yourself down, you can try swallowing to activate that vagus nerve. You can try stretching your neck muscles. You're wake up in the middle of the night with a little too much adrenaline or cortisol, and it's keeping you awake. You can try these stretches to try to help you relax a bit. And we're going to nod yes. Slow and no. Just feeling those nice neck muscles. They work so hard. Okay, and then using your right hand, pick your head up, that bowling ball, put it back in place. Okay, and now one more stretch. Palms face each other. If you, your normal way of putting your pinky finger on the outside, put the other pinky on the outside this time. And then turn your, if you, if you know. If you don't know, don't worry about it. Turn your palms face away, arms up. Usually we have an awkward way and an easy way with which way we clasp our hands. So we're doing the awkward way now. Lift up the chest. Make your hips nice and heavy. Big inhale, look up. And then exhale, release. All right, and we're going to come back to downward puppy. Free your feet if they've been underneath you for a little while. You can tuck your toes. Let the blood come back to the tops of your feet. Stretch your hands out. Again, mat distance apart, outer shoulder distance apart. Fingers pointing straight ahead. Lean your hips back. Push into the finger pads. Push into the base of the thumb. And we'll come to downward facing dog. Lifting up and back. Your feet are about hip distance apart. They could be a little bit wider. And then remember, you can always bend your knees. Now, the other thing with downward dog is we want to make sure our heels are pointing straight back. It's really common for people to turn the heels in, and that will kind of drop your tailbone a bit. So if anything, the heels are going straight back, maybe ever so slightly wide, at least at first. See if you can then lift your tailbone a bit more. Not arch your low back. That's a different action, but actually lift your tailbone. Okay? And then... We're going to take that right foot, look forward. We're going to step that right foot all the way between the hands. Big step. And if it doesn't make it, you just use your hand. Get it up there. So we're coming into a right angle. Come on your fingertips, hands on either side of your front shin. Back toes are, are we losing you? Oh, okay. And tuck your right hip. We lost Georgia. Okay, tuck your right hip toward your right heel. Left hip lifts. <laughs> extend from tailbone out through crown of head. And you're having that nice grounding through that right sit bone. Push into your right foot. Place your back knee down. If you want to, you could always roll your mat and pad that back knee because we're going to stack right on top of it. That can be a little hard on the kneecap. Drop your pelvis. So it's, it's tempting to let that right hip lift up. Let it be heavy. That's going to knock you a little, little bit off balance, but that's okay. Use your abdominals to hold you. Take your arms up and you're stacked. So just working on this balance right here. This is a good one. Pushing into that front foot, letting the right hip drop, lift through the sides of your waist, look up, big inhale, and then exhale, touch down. And we're going to place the hands, lift that back knee up, and step the right foot back. The easiest way to step the right foot back is to heel toe it off to the right and then slide it really wide. So if you get stuck there, that's a little tip. Okay, and we're back and down dog. And then feel that right side nicely opened up all the way up the whole right side body up to the right nostril should feel a little more open, wide, spacious. 
and we'll do the left side. So left foot steps forward. Just keep practicing this action of trying to step the foot forward, right? Because that's not an easy one for a lot of people, but it's an important action using that hip flexor. Walk your fingertips back either side of the foot. Lift your, we've got Lucy's gonna replace Georgia. This is awesome. Okay, yep, so come into a lunge, her left foot is forward. <laughs> and back hip lifts a little tiny bit, like I'm almost like I'm hollowing that right side of the pelvis. And then I'm pushing into my left foot. So my left hip is really grounding. That's the action we're going for. Pushing into that left heel, left hip. That's what helps open up that left side, the left nostril, left side of the face. Then placing the back knee down. Again, I can fold my mat if I want you to, to pad that back knee. Coming straight up. So I'm straight up through my pelvis. Find your balance here by pushing into your left foot and drop the left hip. Then arms come up. Hold it right there. Again, find the balance. Resist any temptation to lift the left hip. And instead, lift through the sides of your waist. Look up. Yeah, this is good. Using good stabilizing muscles here. One more inhale. And then exhale. We'll touch down. And step it all the way back. You can step straight back or you can wiggle that left foot off to the left to clear everything that's in the way. <laughs> and move it back. Downward facing dog. Slide forward to plank pose. And then lowering down, right? You could just lower down. You can place your knees down and practice lowering through a push-up. That will make you a little bit stronger over time. Point your toes straight back. Take your hands, palms face up by your sides and just lift your shoulders. So my feet are down. They, they might lift a little bit, but they're mostly down. Pelvis is down. Pubic bone is down. And I'm lifting my low abdominals to protect my low back, to lengthen my low back. In fact, I'm going to lengthen through my legs as well. Extend out through the crown of your head, shoulders curl back, and then rest. Come all the way down. Make a little pillow with your hands. Turn your head to one side. Nice full breath into that low back. And then one more time. Arms reach back behind you, palms face up. Curl your shoulders back. Lift your head and chest. Before you get too far, use your low abdominal muscles. Pull them in to the spine. As if you were, as if, right, you can't, but as if you could lift your low stomach off the mat. So my pubic bone is down, my pelvis is down, but I'm trying to lift my low stomach, lengthen through the legs, inner thighs, reach away, and come all the way down. And again, make a little pillow, turn your head, and then really soften those back body muscles. So it's like full engagement and then full letting go. And from there, we're going to sit all the way back. Extended child's pose. So feet together, knees wide. Sit the hips back, head low. And we're gonna go crescent over to the right. So walking the hands over to the right, over that right thigh. Lift your stomach up and over. Use your right hand to push the hips back to the heels and the left arm reaching long. Let your head go. Nice full breath into that whole left side body. So we've done a couple side body opening poses today. I think they're really important. We don't tend to do anything during our daily life, most of us anyway, that opens up or uses the sides of the ribs and the muscles between the ribs. I think I talked about this in our last yoga class. And it's so important to get those intercostal muscles, those muscles between the ribs, nice and supple and springy so that when we breathe, the lungs open and receive the breath. Good, we'll come back to the center and over to the left side. So up and over, using your left hand if you need to, to just gently push your hips back toward your right hip. Right arm is stretching now. Breathing through that whole right side from the right hip, up the side waist, up through the sides of the ribs. And as I breathe, I'm purposefully expanding the sides of the ribs, making more space for the breath, it's amazing how tight the lungs get. We don't even realize the rib cage gets tight, the muscles get tight, and we actually reduce the space for the lungs to take up. So why not give them a little more space, let the ribs be springy? One more full breath, and back to center, okay? And back to downward facing dog. So hands are outer shoulder distance, fingers spread, tuck your toes, lift up and back, bend your knees a little tiny bit if you need to. 
Don't worry about your heels touching the ground. That is not very interesting or important. Do, however, ever so slightly tuck those front ribs in. So instead of hyperextending the low back or the mid back, just a little integration. So you could feel from the top of your tailbone or the, the back of the sacrum, there's a nice line flowing down the spine to the crown of the head. There's not really a dip there so much. Okay, now we're going to walk the feet forward to the hands and bow. And again, you could bend your knees a little bit. Let's go ahead and hold the elbows, crossing the forearms, let your head hang. You may need to bend your knees quite a lot here so that you can actually let your head hang, right? Depending on how tight things are, sometimes we lose um, mobility in the low back and the upper back. But we want to get some gravity pulling the skull away from the neck for a moment. Switch the grip, put your other forearm on the outside. A little space between those vertebrae at the very top of the spine and then the giant hollow vertebrae that is your skull. And then placing the hands down, bend your knees a little bit more, bring your elbows to your knees and just look halfway up. So we're in this kind of half squat position. My back is pretty flat, head and heart are at the same level. This is a good way to keep ourselves from passing out. But it's also a good position because our sit bones can be wide behind us. In fact, purposely kind of widen the sit bones back there. And then lift your low abdominal muscles and come up to stand from there. All right. Good. Come all the way up. We're going to do one more side body opening, crescent. So bring your feet together, heels together. Take your arms up. And this time I'm going to hold my left wrist with my right hand and bend my elbows a lot. That way I'm going to really focus on the side body, not the shoulders. Lift up through the crown of your head and arch over to your right. I'm holding my left wrist, arching to my right. The hips bump out a little bit, relax the shoulders, lift up through the sides of the right waistline. You're bending to the right, lift out of the right side as you go that way. Notice I'm really relaxing the shoulders and the arms. Just opening up my armpit. <laughs> and then back up to center, and we'll switch the grip. Left hand holds the right wrist. Push into your feet. I'm hugging the legs to the midline, up and over. Nice length through the left side waist. I'm bending to the left, but I'm trying to lengthen out of that left waistline. Obviously, I'm stretching the right side. That's easy. But how tall can I get through the left side? Big breath. Push into your feet and come back up. All right. Hands release. Now, take your feet outer hip distance. Interlace your hands behind your back. So, like so, palms face each other. And curl the shoulder blades back. You may need to bend your knees quite a lot for this. Make sure your feet are parallel so you're, um, you might have to turn your heels out a little bit. Bend your knees a little if you need to start. And send those sit bones back. And then lifting the hands. Now, you don't have to lift the hands toward the sky. You could <clears throat> rest your hands on your low back. That works too. But if you're going to do that, curl your shoulders back. So we're working on the shoulder blades coming toward each other. If you're very flexible, it is possible to overdo that action, in which case you're bending your elbows a little bit. And still, you're not, you're not hyperextending your wrists. So there's still like you're holding something between the, the palms. Like you're holding a little egg, okay? And then, and then curling the shoulder blades back, bow forward. You could straighten your legs more if you want to. Lean a little bit weight forward toward your toes. Take one more breath there. And then push into your feet. Come all the way up and release. Now, feet are even a little bit wider. Not, not like a wide split, but you'll see, right? Because we're going to bend our knees and bring our elbows to our knees. So my width of my feet is such that my shins could get toward vertical. If I'm too wide, I won't be able to get my knees over my feet. See, my, my shins are, are kind of bent in a little bit. If I'm too narrow, I'll very easily push my knees wider than my feet. So I'm picking the distance. My toes are turned out a little bit, but my shins are pretty much vertical. My butt is back. My torso is leaned forward. Yep. And then we're just going to go a little bit side to side here. Keeping the hips nice and low, reaching the sit bones back. Yeah, so it looks like this. I'm, I'm in this side position here. My back is pretty flat. I'm using my low abdominals to lift up 
sitting back into my heels, back into my sit bones, just a little bit more. Yep, and then back to center, push into your heels, come up. Yes, that's a good way to open up the hips and the groins. All right, back to the front of your mat. Big inhale, stretch up. Exhale to bow. Inhale, look halfway up. Step your left foot back to a long lunge. Okay, balancing there. We're going to place that back knee down and lean the front knee forward over the toes. So my back knee is going to drag forward a bit. and I'm leaning forward, stretching, open that back calf and possibly my left hip. I'm going to keep dropping my right hip toward my right heel. Lengthen out through the crown of the head. Now you have options here. You could, so actually we'll all do this together. So here we've got our, we've got our calf stretch. Go ahead and continue with that. One more breath. Okay, then we're going to back the hips up. I might pad my knee if I need to, if I don't have enough thick enough mat. And then I'm going to take my hands to the inside, both hands to the inside, walk my right foot off to the right a little bit, even turn my right toes out to the right. Now this is stage one. This is a lot like the lunge we were just doing, the side lunge. If you notice, your right leg is in that same position that we were just in standing. Okay, so I've got my right sit bone reaching back behind me, widening the right sit bone. Now I could go a little further here. I could start to lower onto my left forearm and maybe even my right forearm. And you just see, that may not be possible, but that's, that's the beginning of this pose. If you're flexible, and this is like doing absolutely nothing for you, you can lean the whole thing forward, but be careful because you might find you don't need to, right? Like being back here for me, this is a much happier action on my hip. I can really work on widening that right sit bone, widening the left sit bone and grounding the right sit bone toward my right heel. And if I move forward, for example, it's a lot harder to ground through that right hip. So just checking that out. There's no merit to uh, hypermobility. So just respecting that. Integration is a good thing. Muscle integration is a good thing. And of course, some flexibility, range of motion is a good thing too. But we want to find some balance. Okay, and then coming up on the hands. Now we're going to step back to downward facing dog. So i got to put a good amount of weight into my hands, lift the back knee up, step it back. And you should feel some good openness through that right hip. In fact, we're going to take that right leg up to the sky, stretch it up. We'll, we'll let the hips open for now so you don't have to square off. Just get some space through that right side. Nice breath all the way up the right side of the body and place the right foot back down. And we're gonna come forward to plank again and lower down. So again, remembering that one could put their knees down to lower with control and work on that reverse push up action. Okay, now hands back behind you, we're gonna interlace the hands. If you, again, if you have a dominant way that you always put your pinky on the outside, put the other pinky on the outside this time. Heels are just slightly turning in toward each other. Push the pelvis down, so that'll help you tone the back body. Curl the shoulders and start to lift. Pelvis is down, reach the legs out. Legs are more or less down. They might lift off, but, they, but they're not trying to. They might just by chance. Big inhale and then exhale, release. Good, and we'll tuck our toes. Lifting back, tabletop, downward facing dog. One breath here, and then walk your feet in toward your hands. Bow, push into your feet, inhale, come all the way up, use the back of the legs, big stretch up. Exhale, hands to your sides. All right, second side, inhale. Exhale to bow. Inhale, look up, halfway up, step your right foot back. Holding that lunge for just a beat, look up, and then we'll place the back knee down carefully. Again, you could pad it. If you had a blanket or a pillow, you could use that too. And we're gonna slide that front knee over the toes. The back knee might slide a little bit forward as well. I'm up on my fingertips. I'm really spreading, my hands are on either side of my leg to start, yep. I'm really spreading the toes of my left foot to try to get all of the muscles in the bottom of the foot. If you think of the muscles on the bottom of the foot as like a little fan, fanning out from pinky toe to big toe, and then they all come together at the heel, at the Achilles tendon. You can kind of picture that, fan them out, push into the ball of the big toe, push into the pinky toe, and then gathering up at that Achilles tendon as you stretch, 
Now that may not feel like much of a stretch to you and that's okay. Just envision it. And maybe the stretch for you is in the front of the right hip. That's okay. And then we're gonna lean the hips back. Walk your hands to the inside of your right leg. Walk your left, I'm sorry, left, left leg. Walk your left foot off to the left a little bit, even turning the left toes out to the left just a little. And you could just stay right here. Okay, so again, this is like, now the left side of that side lunge we were doing. The thigh is more or less at a right angle. The shin is vertical. And I'm just pushing into my left heel. So that's stage one. It's a great place to be to help align that hip. Stage two would be coming onto the right forearm and then maybe the left forearm. And you could walk a little bit off to the right to make more space in that hip joint. We don't want anything to feel jammed up in the hip joint, right? We wanna really try to open the hip joint up. And one way to do that is to keep pushing into the left heel. If you've lost contact with your left heel, you've gone too low. So then you need to come up a little bit on the, or even come all the way back up to straight arms. So that'll have a lot to do with the configuration of your hip, like, like literally the way you were born. And also the tension of the muscles, the hamstring and the inner thigh. So we'll just play with that, respect that. If you're more flexible, this just may not be very interesting at all. There's no sensation. And you could lean forward a bit and work on really driving the, sit, the left sit bone back as you lean forward. So again, not losing contact with the heel or the sit bone. Keep those in your attention. Nice full breath. And then we'll come up, placing the hands, lift that back knee, step back to downward facing dog. And then we'll take the left leg up. So you gotta push nice and even into both hands and just open up the left hip for right now. We'll just big open stretch the whole left side of the body, the left stomach up to the left armpit and place the left foot down. And we'll walk forward again, standing forward bend, bow. Come all the way up, stretch up. Exhale, hands to your sides. All right, we're gonna do a little bit of a different standing balancing pose. This time we did tree last class. This time holding on to the knee. So standing on your left foot, We'll pick up that right knee and interlace your hands around the shin. I'm just working on this. It's a little bit different than tree pose. And what happens to most people in this is they want to tuck the tail. You just, you just tuck your tail without even thinking about it. So the question is, can we shift the weight back a little bit? All right, so here I am. You just keep holding this pose. But here I am with my tail under me. And can I just shift my torso slightly forward and my hips back and play around with that, right? So I can shift, as to, here's the tail tucking, I'm leaning my torso back, here's the torso forward and I'm untucking. So just going back and forth like that, just a nice slow playing around with that balance. This exercise can be really helpful for people who struggle with tree and getting their foot up high. And if you can't hug your knee up this high, right? Like this, this mobility is really hard for you. You can hold on beneath the thigh right here. Yeah. You can even do this exercise. We'll just hold it just a little bit more, but you could even do this exercise with the foot out in front of you, shifting the weight forward and back. So I'm very light on my right foot there. And then we'll all place that right foot down. Okay. And left leg, <clears throat> hugging shin, interlace the hands around the front of the shin. So this would be, this would be the, the exercise we're going for, but there's lots of modifications like I showed. You have your hand underneath, you have your foot out in front. But what we're working on is the ability to stand on one leg, whoop, and shift, tilt the pelvis. So there's the tail tuck, there's the tail untuck. Sometimes it's easier to control through the torso a lot of us don't really know where our tailbone is or it's sort of hard to feel it doing anything, right? So then you just shift the tailbone by shifting your weight front of the foot, back of the foot. We'll hold it a little bit longer, just working, working with that idea that you can actually move your pelvis while you're standing on one leg and still hold your balance. 
if you think about it, you're doing this all day long when you're walking, shifting your weight around like that on one leg at a time, and then we'll place that foot down. Okay. All right, one more standing pose. Take your feet wide. It's a wide stance. We're going to go side, so I should say two more. We're going to side angle through standing forward bent, wide legged forward bent, and back to side angle on the other side. So nice wide stance. Turn your right foot out, straight out to the end of your mat. Left heel, widen it just a little bit. Um, heel to arch or heel to heel. Either one works. Bend the front knee. My shin is vertical. It's not beyond vertical. Forearm to thigh. So I might have to walk my back foot back a little bit so that I have enough room to bend that knee nice and deep and have the shin vertical. Thigh horizontal as best I can. Top arm comes across the body just like we did in that neck stretch. The side of the ear, palm face down. And then just like with that neck stretch, I could turn my torso up a little bit. As I turn up though, I need to draw my low abdominals back and lengthen through that back leg. So I'm getting this nice oppositional action, back leg reaching back behind me, low abdominals drawing in and up and reaching out toward my fingertips. So there's an energetic split across the pelvis there. One part rooting into that back leg, one part reaching out through that top arm. And then we'll come up, push into your legs, come all the way up to stand, turn your feet parallel. Check that they really are parallel. So you might have to turn your heels just a tiny bit wider than you think. That'll give you room for your tailbone to move. Then bowing forward. See, if I have my heels turned in here, and you can always experiment and prove it to yourself. If I turn my heels in, my tailbone will not be so free to lift. But I want my tailbone to lift, not my low back to arch, but my tailbone. So put your mind way down low there, the base of the spine, and see about lifting that part. The, the sensation is as if you are pulling your sit bones wider. The head of the femur bones are widening and moving back. Go ahead and let your head come down. You could, if you're so tight in the legs, less flexible, you could have your hands quite far out and leaning the weight forward toward the toes. You could also have just a little bit of bend in the knees. I like to think of the very top of my shins as moving forward. Head is down. Push into both feet evenly. See if you can find that extension from the core of the pelvis out through both legs. The inside edges of the legs are extending down into the earth. The outside edges of the legs are lifting up toward the pelvis. There's a nice energetic loop there. You can reverse the loop too if you ever want to, right? Extend down through the outsides of the legs, draw in through the insides of the legs. It's nice to see the different effects. And then inhale, look halfway up. You can definitely bend your knees here if you have shaky knees or just bring your hands to your hips and come up. And then we'll turn to the second side for side angle. So my left toes turn straight to the end of my mat, forearm to knee. I'm gonna make sure I have a long enough stance. So here, for example, for me, my thigh is not yet horizontal to the ground. So I can walk that back leg back a little bit and now I'm sitting lower. That's not always accessible to people, but I like sitting lower because it lets me ground this thigh bone, the top of the thigh bone down, which is what I'm always looking for is getting space right here, right between the top of my thigh and the side of my waist. Take your top arm across and then turn open. As you turn open though, don't introduce too much of a back bend. So there's a little hollowing of the abdominal muscles. Like I'm moving into my back body and then I'm stretching through that back leg. The top thigh, my right thigh, is not moving forward. If anything, it's ever so slightly scooping backward. So again, I have a little hollowness through my right abdominal muscles as I push into my left heel, push into my right leg, big inhale, and then push into both legs, come up to stand. Turn your feet parallel again. And one more time, we'll do this for Ben. We have different options with the hands. This time, we'll maybe reach toward the big toes. So as I bow forward, I'm gonna take my big toes, hold on with my first two fingers and let my head go. Now this variation requires more leg strength. So you have to kind of respect the fact that, especially if you're a hyper extender and you're not great at integration in the leg muscles, this is gonna be some work. 
that meaning you, you should definitely work. You should hug the leg muscles into the bone, create some tone there around the knees purposely. The top of the shins at the knees are slightly moving forward. Activate those hamstrings, make them fire. So it's not all stretch. There's actually work happening. This is great for people who are more flexible. If you're very tight, this pose isn't even accessible. Don't worry about it, right? Then you have your hands out here and you're in a flat back and you're just working on the hamstrings, no problem. But if you're a more flexible, loose-limbed person, you need to work on integration, on hugging the muscles to the bone. And see, that's probably enough because now you're getting tired, right? So that's good. <laughs> Place your hands on the mat, look halfway up. And again, if your leg muscles are now really tired, go ahead and bend your knees a tiny bit to come up just to give yourself a little relief and, and not hyperextend the knees. Okay, and then we'll step back to the front of the mat. Okay, make sure your strap is nearby. You're gonna be able to get to it when you come down on to your back. So we'll start here. Once again, we'll come into our squat, just like we did in the very beginning of class, by reaching the arms out. It could take your feet a little bit wider, maybe even turn your heels in a bit. It gives you more mobility in the squat. So as you lower down, you have a chance of maybe not just rolling flat onto your back, although that happens and that's where we're all gonna end up anyway. But we're working on controlling it, keeping the heels down, slowly sit back, and then we're gonna all roll onto our back. Keep your knees bent and come onto your back. Your strap is where you can get to it. Okay, so first off though, with your feet close to your hips, palms face down, we're just do a little pelvic tilt back and forth. So from here, tuck the tail as if you were gonna lift your hips off the mat and then untuck the tail and roll the hips back down. So tucking the tail, lifting just a little, like I, I'm lifting my hips about two inches off and then I'm articulating back down. So a few more times. Tuck the tail, lift the hips off, and then articulate that low back, back down, vertebrae by vertebrae, onto the mat. One more time. Rolling, so we're getting that pelvic tilt action. That's tucking. Keep it tucked as you articulate back down, and then untuck it and make a little space underneath your low back, So you, and, then, and then find neutral. Okay, so I could arch it, and I could flatten it. And now I'm just letting it go to wherever wherever it naturally lands. And if you're not sure where natural is for you, you could just literally pick your hips up and put them back down and maybe you land a little closer to neutral. Okay, now take your strap and we're gonna hook that right foot right behind the toes and lengthen the right leg toward the ceiling. My left leg is still bent for now because right now we're going for neutral. So my pelvis is neutral, it's flat on the mat my tail is not tucked. If I, if I pulled my toes toward my nose, I'd be starting to tuck my tail. So I'm going to untuck it. My leg is just vertical, not pulling in toward me at all. Keep this. Point your toes into the strap. Flex. Point. And as you flex, see if you can get that heel to reach above your toes. And then point and flex. Now stay, now keep nice and easy in that foot. Keep your pelvis neutral. Don't untuck or retuck your tail. And can you straighten your left leg out? What will often happen is I now try to straighten my left leg is my right leg will go with it and I'll start to arch my low back. That's, that's kind of okay, right? If I have a little arch in my low back, I can then correct it by using my abdominal muscles and pulling that leg back to vertical, relax the shoulders. A lot of people can't straighten their right knee here, so it's a little bit bent. That's okay too. It might even be a lot bent. Don't, don't worry about that so much. We're, we're going for the thigh bone at the, at the part where it meets the pelvis. We're going for that groundedness. Okay, so whatever the knee has to do to make that happen. And ideally, I can reach through that left leg and my left thigh bone is on the ground. If I want to get my left thigh bone down, I have to let my pelvis tilt toward my left toes a little bit. And then... My back is a little too arched, so now I'm going to correct by pulling my abdominal muscles in and up and that right leg a little more vertical. And that's how we start to get the left leg totally flat on the mat and the right leg toward vertical. Okay, relax your rib cage. The ribs should not be involved. Now, so that's just a little posture exercise. Now, for more of a stretch, take your right leg off to the right, hold on with your right hand, 
and we'll not worry about the left leg now. The left leg's gonna lift off a bit, that's okay. Turn your right heel a little bit up to the sky, your right toes down toward the floor. You can do whatever you want with your left arm. You can keep it by your side. You can reach it out to the left. You could reach it overhead. In any case, stretch through that left leg. Don't worry about grounding the left leg. Just reach it long, out through the toes. Nice full breath, reaching both legs out of the pelvis and then back up to center. And we'll release that leg. Now pause for a moment, both legs flat. And you should feel that your right leg, actually, I guess I should feel, I feel both of my legs sit a little closer to the ground, but the, the front of the right hip is a little more open and settled. So it's not so pulled up. Okay. Now bend both knees again. We're going to start this way again. And, and just to get back to neutral, let's lift the hips and place them back down. Okay. So now we're all leveled back out. Take your left foot hook behind your toes, straighten that leg. So with the right knee bent, you have a better chance of getting your left leg straight. But if it's bent a little bit because things are tight, that's okay. All right. We're working toward getting it vertical. We're working toward getting the heel level with the toes. I can kind of hang on my toes a little bit, not hyperextending the knee. So I've got those muscles integrated around my knee, my top of my shin slightly forward. And then we'll just do a little point and flex, pointing through the toes and flex. One of the things that's tricky about yoga is a lot of times the people who are attracted to yoga are already fairly mobile, fairly flexible in their joints. And then you very quickly become over mobile, over flexible, and you don't necessarily have good integration, muscular um, attention, right? And then you get injured, like in the joints. So one of the things I'm always trying to figure out is how to teach the people who are attracted to yoga, the flexible people, how to keep integration and not try to keep bumping up against extremes, the extreme range of motion. Good, and then we're done flexing there. And so this exercise, while it may not seem very sensation-filled, is a good integration exercise. So here we go. I've got my left leg vertical. I'm going to stretch my right leg out. If I, if I just reach through to my right leg, my left leg is going to follow a little bit. And now can I really get the back of that right leg down on the ground? Keep it down as close as you can. Your butt is not actually in the way. It feels like it is, but it's not. Um, I have a substantial size butt and I can get my leg down. Okay. Now keeping the right leg down, use your abdominal muscles, draw them back toward your spine and bring your left leg more vertical. Try to leave that right leg where it is. So don't let your right heel slide as you pull your left leg toward vertical, not beyond vertical, just to vertical. So notice how this takes some integration, some abdominal work, some thigh work, some inner back of the thigh work. There's some firing happening. You don't need to fire, by the way, your rib cage or your shoulders or your neck. Those can actually be quite relaxed. Okay, so that's our little postural exercise. Now take your left leg off to the left. And again, don't worry about your right leg falling or li uh, lifting off now. So your right leg, we'll just let it, we'll just let it do what it does. We're not trying to square off the hips or anything. The right arm can reach overhead if you like, or it could be out to the side, your choice. I like to reach it overhead because I like to really stretch open through that right leg, right side body, nice big side stretch. I always feel like a starfish at low tide because they're always funny like this. The starfish are always rumpled up. They're never in a perfect star. They always have a couple legs and arms close to each other, and then there's a big gap or they're missing one. Anyway, okay, so here we are. Big starfish, big inhale. My left heel is slightly above the toes. Toes are pointing down a little bit, a little external rotation of that left leg. And then we'll come back up to center and lower that left leg down and pause for a moment and just feel both legs the openness across the front of the hips. This gets very congested on a lot of us from sitting and driving. And we want that to get some more space when the thigh bones will drop into the back plane without too much pelvic tilt. So I still have a nice neutral low back. Okay, let's take bend both knees and we're gonna cross the left ankle over the right knee, thread the left hand through the center 
and hold on to either the back of the left thigh or the shin. Now, if I can't get to that, I could always take a strap and throw it. I could curl my head and chest up to be able to get to it. And then I can hold on like that. So this is a nice arm extender if you're very tight. Okay. Um, otherwise, I can hold on. I hold my shin, um, but look, my neck is neutral. So a lot of times people hold their shin with their stand up like this with their upper neck and back. So then I would have to shift to my hamstring and I could lengthen. Okay, so that's more important that we're not doing some weird flexion in the neck and back. Or sorry, extension. Anyway, all right, so we're holding on to the shin. Nice hip stretch. And again, if you're very flexible, this is not gonna feel like a lot of sensation and that is okay. Partly you're just getting good at, it's okay to not have like extreme sensation. I can just be present in my body and more like feel the channels opening and the breath moving freely than sort of having to bump up against some sense of stretch. Okay, and then we'll switch sides. Taking the right ankle across the left knee, feeding that right hand through, either holding on to hamstring, I'm interlacing my hands, or shin. Notice that my neck, my upper back are not changing position. They're in neutral my nose is pointing straight up to the sky. <laughs> it's funny when we're tight, all the ways in which we compensate and don't even realize. And then, and similarly, when we're very loose, we try to create stability in some very funny ways. A lot of times um, we try to create stability through our neck and shoulders, overactivating those muscles. I don't know, because they're close to the brain. I wonder why. I don't know. I've also seen people who are very loose try to create stability through their abdo abdominals and, and that get very like um, kind of a lot of abdominal, almost like abdominal migraines or abdominal cramping, a lot of abdominal issues. And they don't realize that they're compensating for all the flexibility, mobility in their body by trying to hold everything here. So that's a good thing to sort of check in. Like, can you breathe into your stomach? Can it be loose? Does your stomach move when you breathe? I mean, it doesn't always have to, but it should be able to rise and fall. Okay, and then we'll release that side. And we'll draw both knees up to the chest. Take your elbows, bend your elbows, arms off to the sides, palms face up. I just gently, just gently tucking the shoulder blades underneath the, the rib cage there. And then taking the knees over to the right. So our final twist. And I'm gonna keep my knees together, which means my whole left side is up. Maybe your left shoulder is right off the floor. That's okay. Let it stretch. On so my elbow is bent, that should feel okay on the shoulder. If it doesn't, just place your left hand on your rib cage. Otherwise, we're working on that, that pec minor opening stretch across the left shoulder. But my knees are stacked, my hips are stacked. That way I know that I'm not gonna be doing anything funny to my sacroiliac joint. Again, if you're very flexible, that's an easy one to, to quickly overstretch and destabilize the pelvis. So keeping the knees stacked one on top of the other, I could even use my right hand to help that so I can relax my shoulder, my left shoulder a bit more. Nice full breath. And begin to soften your eyes, even closing your eyes a little bit. One more big inhale, full exhale. And then we'll come back up to center, knees stay together. If you need to retuck the shoulder blades just a little bit, you can. And then knees off to the left, one hip stacked on top of the other. And then I'll let that right shoulder drop back. So my right shoulder is very tight and it doesn't come to the ground. Yours might, and that's, that's lovely. The more your right shoulder comes down, the more I want you to keep your right knee stacked on top of the left. So then you could use your left hand to help you stabilize so that you can let your abdominal muscles go a little bit here. So you can find that nice, easy breath from lower left stomach up to the right lung, crossing the body. The body loves crossing left to right. The brain loves being integrated in that way, left to right side. The sides of your brain, they want to talk. They want to work together. They want to know what the other one is doing. And the best way to do that is through the body.
through through movements that work left to right and right to left and require the brain to talk. So yoga is really good for that. Walking is really good for that. Swimming, skipping, <laughs> all of those things. Nice big inhale, full exhale. And then we'll come back up, knees together. Hug your knees into your chest. And we'll start by placing the feet on the mat. So knees are bent. Okay, so this is a good, e and look, I lift my hips up just, that's like my natural reflex to get neutral in my pelvis again. So you can do that too. And we could always do Shavasana here, relaxation with the hands on the low stomach, the shoulder blades gently underneath side to side so it can relax the top of the neck there. So this is a fine Shavasana posture. My knees are parallel. They're not falling in toward each other. This is my kids' preferred posture when they make it to Shavasana. <laughs> We do much shorter classes when we practice together, so they're, they're not used to the full hour. Um, but just resting the abdominals. Okay, so that's with a neutral pelvis. My pubic bone is level with my hip bones. The question is, can I keep a neutral pelvis when I straighten my legs? For a lot of people, when they straighten their legs, it untucks the tail so much. So look, I've got my, so much space under my low back. That's quite stressful on the low back. So one way you can take care of that is just gently kind of smoothing the butt muscles down. Use your hands as if you were trying to just slightly tuck your tail and then let the legs go. That doesn't work all the time. Sometimes you have to put your knees up on a bolster um, just to get the balance between tail tuck and untuck. So neutral, hip bones, pubic bone, or I should say pelvis right here, and pubic bone are in the same plane. Then go ahead and take your palms face up. Draw the shoulder blades again, just gently under you. Close your eyes. Sink your chest back. Let those shoulders open so the collarbones are broad. So the front body is nice and open, but the back body is also round. So feel that space behind the collarbones, sinking back into the mat. The front of the ribs are soft and easy. They're able to receive even the most gentle breath. Right, you're not doing anything fancy with your breath now, you've let it go. But then also let the back of the ribs soften. You feel the whole back of the rib cage gently melting down toward the ground. That should help release tension at the base of the skull through the neck so you can swallow. Let your ears go. Let the bridge of the nose and the eyes go. And you can complete this very um, sparse body scan by letting your pelvis sink. Feel the weight of the thighs and the heels on the earth. Just for a few more minutes, feeling this balance between surrendering to the earth and opening to the sky.
And I encourage you, if you're at home, take a few more minutes in Shavasana. Up to 10 minutes. Why not? But right now, I'm going to just bring us back with the breath. Returning to that sensation of breath. And then stretch your arms overhead, reach long through the legs. Exhale, release, soften back down. Draw your knees up. And we'll turn over to the right side. And pause here, let yourself be nice and heavy. Just memorizing this easy, relaxed posture home base and use your hands to press yourself up just keeping the legs nice and heavy and grounded as you come up to sit any grounded seated posture take a moment here Going back into your body, back into the world around you with gratitude.